Discord. Did you guys get the notification? We did. All right. I love it. I will stop sharing and let Ashley take it away. Okay. Let me share my screen here. All right, Matt, does that look good? That looks good. Okay. All right. Thank you, Matt. Um, like he said, uh, I have, I work with a wonderful, wonderful team uh, through North Point um, that puts together um, all of these programmings for our BAC um, uh, Business Advisory Council um, without the involvement with our businesses and our schools. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we would be able to do the phenomenal things that we do. Uh, we have a great group um, of individuals in each school system uh, that has gotten us to where we are with these awards uh, back to back years. So um, really kudos uh, to the team that we continue to work with. So I will get started. I'm super excited to talk about our Business Advisory Council and all the work and great things that we are have been able to bring to our schools and our businesses um, through collaboration and programming um, that we continue to work with. Uh, please, throughout the presentation, do not hesitate to ask questions. Um, I could stop, we, we could chat, not a big deal. So uh, one thing that we began with um, through our BAC was a motto. And our motto is, if you wanna be it, you have to see it. Um, we are developing uh, careers for our students um, after they graduate. And we have realized that a lot of the careers um, they don't see, they haven't been exposed to, um, and that is our sole purpose. We want them to see the different opportunities that are out there. Um, and that is something that we focus on um, each time that we meet for our regional and local uh, BAC meetings. Uh, every year um, in June, uh, we sit down and we put together this uh, facts and achievement um, sheet uh, that we share out. Uh, we will again sit down in June and do the same for 2024. Um, this is from 2023. Obviously, uh, the numbers have grown exponentially, and I will discuss that in a little bit. Uh, but this is just from 2223. Um, exploration and awareness from the partnerships that we have with our businesses. Uh, we, uh, we do this work each and every day. Um, and moving forward, um, as we merge the silos that education has and the silos that business has together, um, we will continue to grow these programs as well. We use a program pretty diligently in our school systems and with our businesses called U Science. Um, I know it's a program that's kind of uh, being trickled through the state of Ohio and is being used more and more every day. Uh, as you can see, we started at a at 2018 with just a few schools. Um, and now in 2023, 24, uh, with the 27 school districts that we work with, uh, we have 26 schools that use U Science. And I should have said um, my BAC that we work with is um, Ottawa, Erie, Huron, and Sandusky County. So those are the, uh, the counties that we cover. Um, that is the region that our ESC covers. So out of those counties, uh, we have 26 out of 27 of our school districts uh, using U Science. That is, it's pretty impactful. Um, and I'll get into a little bit more of the U Science platform. My slides have stopped. Matt, are you able to? I have to the that same slide? issue. Is there like a, do you have arrows in the bottom left corner that you're able to just kind of click? I do not. I can be, there you go. Okay. That works. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is one of the reports that we run uh, through U Science. Um, as you can see, uh, it pulls the aptitudes and interests for our students. Uh, what we have noticed is some of the areas our students have a very high interest in, 
but not necessarily a high aptitude in. For example, um, we have a lot of interest in education. Um, your police officers and your firefighters, um, some of some of nursing. Um, typically, it's the careers that students see each and every day, every day. Um, so obviously their interest um, is in those careers. They see them every day. That's really all they've been exposed to. Uh, so what the U Science program does is um, it then pulls those aptitudes of careers that maybe the students didn't know exist. Um, so we have seen that we, in our area, we have a very high aptitude for uh, computer technology and advanced manufacturing. Um, very high in agriculture and hospitality, hospitality and tourism. So when those students have a high aptitude in those areas, but not necessarily a high interest, that is when we want to expose them to those careers. They may not have ever seen it. Um, they might you know, see it and then uh, become interested in it. This is a worksheet that we uh, supply to our schools. Uh, now, these are just optional. Uh, we, we also say at North Point, we work with the willing. Um, if schools want to use the things that we give them, it just it helps you keep organized. This is kind of a one-on-one -on -one uh, worksheet that you can work through you science uh, when the students start in ninth grade and go through their senior year. Uh, this is something that you can sit down with your either career coach or um, your counselor and just discuss um, the different things that you see through you science and you know the things that you're working with through the um, the different programs that we offer. Uh, let's see here. This is kind of the funnel that we try to. Um, have our students go through. Uh, so you want to take U Science as your soft, uh, I'm sorry, your freshman or sophomore year. Uh, typically, your aptitudes are solidified by the time you're 15. Uh, so you want to take it the end of your freshman year, beginning your sophomore year. Uh, then during your sophomore, junior year, this is when we do our teacher and student boot camps, which I will discuss in just a few. Um, and our workforce fairs. So that's kind of like your sophomore, junior year. Um, and then as you're gaining that knowledge of all the different places that you're seeing, kind of discovering if you kind of like stuff or not so much, um, then you wanna start your job shadows and your internships. Now, um, personally, we like to stress job shadow starting in seventh grade. It doesn't hurt anything to go and experience something and you may love it and you may not. Um, sometimes finding out something that you thought you may have loved and discover that really that's not something that you're interested in um, is sometimes even better than you know wasting all of that time thinking um, that this is what you wanna do. So job shadows starting in seventh, eighth grade is huge Go, going through high school until you're ready really to do an internship year uh, senior year, and then obviously going into employment. We discuss these things in our BACs, in our local BACs. Um, we meet with our local BACs every other month. Uh, and then we have a regional BAC meeting um, quarterly. And we discuss this funnel regularly. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a pipeline that our, our businesses wanna see and it's a, pip a pipeline that our educational um, people in the room, it, it's how we merge everyone together uh, to kind of be on the same page. So I talked about student boot camps. Uh, so we started student boot camps just a couple years ago. We did five student boot camps. It was a pilot program. Uh, it impacted, like it says here, 153 students. Uh, what a student boot camp is, uh, is we send a group of students. Now we pull the data from the U Science programs. That's how we discover what students should go to the student boot camps. 
Uh, we're looking at roughly 40 to 50 students per boot camp. Uh, we send them to two businesses. Um, they have lunch in between and they, they discover and they, and they see everything there is uh, in those businesses. This is our collaboration with the businesses in our BACs. Our BACs have been extremely helpful and love bringing students in. This is the first time they connect with students, see students, shake their hand. Um, sometimes students get job offers from student boot camps. We've seen that. Um, there's just a connection sometimes between you know a, a senior or a graduating senior and and someone in a business, which is phenomenal. Um, and like like it shows here. Um, Computer IT, engineering, and advanced manufacturing were the, the focus point of our first student boot camps. And there's a high aptitude in those areas, but not much interest. So we want to expose those students to um, those programs so they actually see the things that they're just naturally good at. This is kind of just reiterating what I just said. Um, the familiarity, uh, increases obviously after you show them things that uh, they may not have been exposed to. So when we started doing the student boot camps, um, as we are doing them, obviously we're learning how to grow them, we're learning how to tweak them and make them better for our students. And we discovered that there was something that was missing. Um, we needed to bring something to give kind of an educational background to uh, some of the experiences that the students were about to see. So starting this year, uh, we now do a lesson before sending the students out into the student boot camp, out into the businesses to, to see the businesses and what's going on. So um, an example lesson uh, for advanced manufacturing that we did was simply um, creating a paper airplane. So our students were all given a piece of paper and they were given roughly, roughly two minutes to create the perfect paper airplane. Uh, so the students created the paper airplane and then we lined them up and we flew the airplane. Um, some crashed obviously and some sailed. Uh, the ones that sailed and did the best that person then became our project engineer. So the lesson starts to embed some of the terminology that they're about to go see. So the project engineer then stood in front of the class and they explained how to create that perfect airplane. So then the students created it. Um, we did, we talked about supply chain. If something were missing, you know, what the breakdown would be in the process of creating the airplane. We talked about quality control. Um, that project engineer chose someone to be their quality control manager. And they would say, you know, that paper airplane doesn't work, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we, we discussed an assembly line to see how many we could get done in five minutes. So those lessons we have seen have really taken off for the students. It's a hands-on hands activity. And then when they go into those, those fields, advanced manufacturing, for example, um, they heard that terminology and then they could immediately connect to what they were talking about. So and, um, as our boot camps evolve, like I said, we just continue to learn and, and tweak things and make them better. Uh, next year, we've already talked about um, tweaking them even better. Um, we are bringing in the next steps of education for the students. So say they go to a healthcare student boot camp, uh, we will bring in a local um, educational component, someone from a local college or community college to talk to them for 15, 20 minutes about, you know, the next steps in the certifications that would be required or the education background um, that they would need to obtain certain jobs so like I said, we, we continue to do these boot camps and they grow and we just tweak them to make them better. Uh, we have also given them an exit survey 
Um, and this is for our career coaches to take back and um, really dig into what their students are interested in. Um, would they be interested in an internship or, you know, what are some of the challenges that would prevent them from going into this career? Is it, um, is it the cost of the education? Is it, there's, you know, not, they don't feel like there's enough jobs in the area. You know, it just creates more conversation to sit down with the student. Um, maybe a student discovered that they, they liked a, suit, a certain part of the boot camp, but not so much another part. So then that's where you send them for maybe a job shadow or an internship. Um, so we have taken a lot of information from a simple survey um, to help, you know, those students reach, reach those goals. So this has been our journey uh, for our student boot camps and our collaborating with our businesses. Uh, this year in 2024, we are up to now uh, 20 boot camps that we completed across our region, impacting 405 students. So that is a little, I think we've doubled it at least, um, the students impact um, that we've had in the last couple of years. And clearly, um, the, we have 40 businesses that have been involved this year, and that's just in this school year. So our business and educational um, collaborating effort, efforts have increased so much um, over the last year. Um, and it's just, it, it's exciting to see for, for our students um, to see what's available, you know, once they graduate or, you know, summer jobs and things like that. It's, it's exciting. Um, we are now also up to 24 uh, career coaches. Um, this started a couple years ago. We started with two in one of our schools. And um, after speaking to other schools about uh, the benefits of having a career coach right in your school, um, we quickly increased to 11 and then 19, and now we're up to 24. So uh, those schools, uh, out of our 27 schools, um, this career coach meets with me. Um, we meet regularly. Uh, I meet locally in each county with the career coaches because each of my counties are just a little different. Um, so we meet locally and discuss things that are going on in their schools and things to improve and um, how to reach different goals and that sort of thing. And then we also meet regionally um, on a quarterly basis. And you would be surprised how many um, awesome school activities are stolen from one region to the next. And that's why we do it. Um, it, it it's a great, great group of people. Um, my career coaches lean on each other. They email each other um, different ideas. And it, it doesn't matter that you're in one county or another. Uh, everybody works seamlessly together. It's, they're a, it's a great group. Um, we also started this year doing um, collaborated career expos. Uh, we just kicked off our first one. Um, I was just talking with Matt yesterday. Uh, we had roughly almost 300 students attend a um, collaborated career expo. It was with the University of Finley, uh, Terra State Community College and ourself, North Point. Um, the students, I had two counties start at the um, construction site where they learned everything 5G related and everything construction, how you dig things and pull wire and all those, you know, um, construction 5G technical terms. Um, so they spent two hours there. And I, meanwhile, my other two counties were at Terra State learning the educational certifications and educational background that they'll need to merge into those careers. So they were fed lunch and then they flip-flopped uh, areas and everyone got to see everything, the 5G construction world and education background. And just that collaboration with the higher ed and our local businesses and our schools, it was, it was a phenomenal event, uh, beautiful weather. Uh, the, the students really enjoyed it. So we are continuing to promote and 
and work those relationships between you know, education, business, and, and higher education. Um, we also do uh, school summits. So the school summits take place um, three times a year. Uh, we have it at Kalahari because we usually reach about 200 people. Um, these are our educational teams that come to Kalahari. So what we have noticed in our schools to really move um, career awareness is to have a really solid team within each school. And those teams consist of usually possibly a superintendent, um, a principal, a career coach, a counselor, and possibly a couple teachers. And working together, uh, working with businesses, local businesses is really how we've been able to move these experiences um, through for so many students. So the school summits, we bring all of those people together. Uh, we have some schools that are, we call them our speed boaters. Um, they are really doing phenomenal things in their schools. Um, we have some schools that are working their way towards that direction. Um, so we showcase some of the awesome things that some of our schools are doing. Um, for example, we had uh, a few schools do a pitch challenge this year. Um, students, it was, it's kind of like uh, a shark tank for students. Uh, we had businesses come in and judge them and they, the students spoke and produced um, all of these different items. I was glad I wasn't a judge because I probably would have wanted to purchase all of them. They were, it was a, a phenomenal day. Uh, but it, again, it's a way for our students to uh, be exposed to different businesses um, and, you know, get up and speak, work on soft skills. Uh, but, and that came out of our school summit. Uh, one of our schools did the pitch challenge last year. We had one school um, that did the pitch challenge and this year we had six. So it's a way to kind of showcase some of the great things that our schools are doing and, um, Everybody, it becomes kind of just a working machine through the whole county. Everybody leans on everyone else um, and help each other achieve the goal that we're trying to help our students, you know, understand everything that's out there. Let's see here. So, like I said, we do these uh, student boot camps. Um, we decided to start teacher boot camps, uh, and, and by 2019, uh, we had completed 12 and after this June, we will be through 16. So a teacher boot camp is, um, it's, it's similar to the student boot camp, but a little bit more involved. Um, it's a four day experience. Teachers come in and, um, they actually receive, um, college credit. Uh, through the teacher boot camp, we work with Ashland University, and they receive um, college credit for these. Uh, they go into different businesses. They'll spend between um, four and five hours at a business. They'll learn everything from their marketing to, you know, how they run every part of their business. Um, and then those educators are tasked with a project. So at the end, they have to present a project of how they're going to use what they learned in the business world in their classroom. So then it's, it's again, tying that educator piece with the, the business piece, um, trying to break those silos down so everyone starts to realize that there's something outside the, the high school doors. Um, the participation is climbing. Uh, we have um, increased, obviously, um, as, as the years go by, we increase numbers, and um, this year we are allowed to have um, 16 seats uh, per county um, to uh, attend the teacher boot camps, so that's pretty exciting, and, and we've, we've kind of seen uh, that these have now started to grow across Ohio. Um, the governor, uh, we sat down with the governor at Ashland University with some of the other schools um, and 
talking about how great this has been impactful for uh, everyone in our region and it's it's now moving across the state. So we're pretty excited to get uh, 16 seats uh, per county uh, for this upcoming year, this upcoming summer. So, and okay. So what are our next steps? Um, we have discovered that our focus has always been so heavily in our high schools um, that we're going to start to move a little bit down into our middle school, uh, start to give them some career exposure to our local businesses and things like that. Um, we have now, now 12 of our districts using the middle school part of U-Science. Um, it's called Snapshot. And it's just a way to start the conversations of uh, career readiness. Um, we have also begun a middle school career readiness platform. Uh, we use a program that will be free across the state of Ohio called uh, Portfolio OH. Uh, Portfolio OH is a program to um, track everything that a student is, has been doing um, K through 12. So in middle school, they have a small seal um, uh, it's kind of like an exposure seal. It's nothing that they are being tested on or um, that's required, you know, to move into high school. It's just a way to, to show that the students are, are seeing things out in the world and being exposed to different careers. Um, this platform, uh, we worked hand in hand with Portfolio to bring this to our, our, middle, our middle school through high school. Um, in high school, they will use that platform a ton. Um, it is a way for our students to accomplish graduation seals, uh, to track work-based learning hours. Uh, it, it does, the program does a, a lot. Um, we realized that we needed this to start in middle school when we discussed uh, some of the things that are missing from our graduates. Um, what's being told to us from our businesses. Um, they are all saying that our students are, are lacking um, some soft skills. So our soft skill readiness um, needs to increase. So we were discussing different ways to do that. And we, just start, we decided to start a soft skill roadshow um, is what we call it. Uh, we go into eighth grade, um, eighth grade, classrooms all over our region and we shake hands. Uh, we look each other in the eye. We have discussions about soft skills um, and what it means to have soft skills and what soft skills they already have and what they're developing already. Um, we talk about the fact that some of them already get up to their own alarm clock. They get themselves dressed, they feed themselves, they get to school on time. And I don't think they realize that they are already developing soft skills in seventh and eighth grade, that they will then move on to use those um, as they grow. And those are things that um, we, we praise them for, we highlight them for, for doing those awesome things and to continue those soft skills. So uh, the soft skill roadshow we started this year and we absolutely plan on um, continuing that um, throughout. So key reminders um, as we <clears throat> move through our BAC is to continue to collaborate. <clears throat> it, that's huge. It's something that we focus on each and every day, um, every time we meet and to not be afraid to be innovative. Um, we like to try new things. We, we, we do pilots all the time uh, with one or two of our schools that wanna try new innovative um, programs. Um, and that is something that our businesses support and, and so do our school, our school systems. Um, it's, it's a huge purpose um, and very important to use our, the U-Science program. If you don't use U-Science, uh, I would suggest to find a tool that really um, helps to focus on what is important for your students as they're, as they're moving through school. Um, how 
to reach those students to, to show them what is out there um, in the world. And again, providing ongoing regional support through our career coaches and business leaders. We lean on each other a lot. Um, we email, we make phone calls, text, whatever, um, ideas um, to bring different programs uh, to light and just continue to do uh, great things for our communities. I kind of went through my slides uh, quickly. This is my contact information. Um, it's also Andrea Smiths, who is, like it says, um, our assistant superintendent. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email. I have no issues uh, discussing any of the programs that we uh, work through uh, each and every day. And Matt, did you have any questions or anyone else? Uh, yeah, I had a few questions, Ashley. Sure. Thanks for joining us and in, in, in doing this for, for, for this series. Um, my first question, how did you, because I feel like buy-in, you said, you know, 26 or 27 of your schools are, are using you science. Um, and then you said like 24 out of 27 have implemented a career coach. How did you get buy-in from that number of diverse districts? Sure. Um, and, and we do have diverse districts. We have uh, districts that graduate between 35 and 40 students each year. And we have other districts that graduate 300. Um, so very diverse. Uh, it, it really came down to our school summits. Um, we highlighted some of the awesome things that some of the schools were doing with uh, the U Science program. Um, what it showed um, for the students that may or may not have ever had a conversation about uh, what, what am I going to do next? Mm -hmm. um, and it, it kind of took off from there. Uh, the 24 career coaches, uh, our, our counselors these days, they don't have time anymore to talk about next steps. Oh, that's true. Un unfortunately, um, you know, they obviously I, I do work with the counselors and they work really hard and they do their best. But there are there were pieces and parts that were missing. And I think the schools recognize that and to bring career coaches in to help merge that gap and have conversations with the counselors and with teachers. Um, it, it just it just helped. And they also just continued to grow. Hmm. Thanks. Uh, my next question is um, has to do with like you guys coordinate a lot of experiences. Yes, like, a lot. How do you go about doing all that? There's got to be more than a one person army doing that. It has to take a village. Am I correct in saying that, or is it a lot? How does that? How how do you go about doing all of that? Okay. Um, so yes, we coordinate uh, a lot of experiences. Um, I sit down and I. Uh, meet with the economic development team from each county. So our economic development teams are the ones that pull the businesses in for our teacher and our student boot camps. So I sit down with them and we put out a schedule. Um, I meet with my four economic development teams together and um, we roll out a calendar of who's going to do what, when, uh, because it, it does fall a lot on my shoulders to, to do all of that programming. So uh, I work with their team, plus my career coaches, and then myself, and we do it all together. Cool. Yeah. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? I am going to put a link right. I wonder if I can put it in here. Let's see if this works. Um, to our uh, feedback and certificate stuff here in the chat. Um, and then also, um, I am going to put, do, 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 I will do that later. Um, this presentation will be posted to our um, our Google website. So if you have any districts that you're working with or any BACs that you're working with that um, want to get a hold of um, Ashley, it'll all be there. All the information will be there. Um, and then um, the recording will be there as well. Um, 
if no one else has any questions, um, I appreciate you all joining. This gives you about 20 minutes before you move on to, well, I guess lunchtime is next. Um, move on to lunch. Um, but your next session will begin at 1230. Appreciate you all joining and have a great day. Thanks, Matt.